together as a church, yes. brings us together as a people, Amen. And, uh, and, and I want you to sing it from your heart. I need him, and we need each other to survive, all right? Yes. Amen. Get in with us, all right?
Thank you, Lord. We're praying. I 
God when God touches you. Amen. Amen. If somebody sends you home for hospice and you get better, that's a good thing. Oh, yes. Amen. God is still God. Amen. And, uh, so, God bless you. I've been, uh, so in the process, so once again, thank all of you that helped us, assisted us in moving. And um, and then once you get all that stuff in there, then you got a situation. You just yes. walk around the house, you're looking at it like, <laughs> where do I begin? Where do I start, man? Uh, it's not <laughs> but thank you, thank you, everyone, for your assistance. We appreciate it. And uh, but anyway, throughout the week, so of course my wife and I, our life has been discombobulated, and um, we you didn't, we didn't get to get out like we normally do through the week, but we had to move. And uh, so, but throughout the week, you know, God was dealing with my heart about this subject. And I want I want to be careful about this because I think in Christendom, in, 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 in religion, a lot of times people will take a phrase or take something out of the Bible and they'll blow it out of proportion. And they'll make it into something that it doesn't need to be. You understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, I want to share something with you this morning that I hope and pray that you will take the heart. And not only that you will take the heart, I want you to make it a part of your everyday life. And I want you to understand and realize that number one, God is real. Yes, he is. Amen. Did you, did you hear me? Amen. Do you believe yes. God is real? Yes. God is real. Hallelujah. Yes. God is real. Yes. Number two, the word of God is real. Amen. Amen. The word of God is real. And number three, I believe people who have God in them is real. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Number one, God is real. Number two, the word of God is real. Yes. And number three, people who really have God is real. Amen. Because it's kind of hard to fake it if God is in there. Yeah. I, people who are not, don't have God are the ones that really over, you know these people always try you that they're spiritual. Uh -huh. These people are always trying to prove right. to you that they're saved. Right. These people are always trying to uh, challenge everybody else about Christianity. Let me tell you something. If God is in you, you don't have to, the light will shine. Amen. The light will shine. Amen. People will know. Amen. I remember some years ago, my wife and I was in a grocery store. And I had just got off work. I had on my work clothes. I was dirty. I don't even remember what kind of work I was doing. I know what I was. I was working in a steel plant. Nashville, Tennessee. I was, I was, uh, I, I was a roll grader. We had, we had sag rods, U-bolts, and stuff. Now, of course, they weren't U-bolts. They, they turned them into U-bolts. But, but we had to change. We had, I had these huge machines, and, and you had to change the dies on them. And we made threads. We made screws, U-bolts, sag rod, and everything. It was the greatest job. I loved it. I loved it. I like those jobs that, that those manhood jobs. I love those. Amen. And I even had me a, a, a weight bench behind. So in between jobs, I go back there. You know, I, was, I was a lot younger back then. You know how, you know how, you know how this is. I'm going to go on. You know, all the time around with you. Until one day I had about a, I had a piece of seven eighths about this long, and I stuck it in that machine and it was bent and it did like this, and it did everything but take me out. You understand what I'm saying? God, God humbled me real quick. And as my big, as my middle sister would say, "You heard me." The I was like, "Oh my God!" It almost got away from me. But but anyway, now I've got a lot to get ready to share. But anyway. In a grocery store. In a grocery store. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Age. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Man, you get a, you know, you walk in the room and like, what did I come in? <laughs> and you won't remember till you leave out the room. I'm telling you, I, yeah. Pastor Boyd, I have something to say. You know when you do that, it has something in my voice with the word right there that makes you forget. Is it? That's yeah. interesting. That's it's interesting. It's something in my voice with the doorway. 
Sister Pat said it's something about going through the doorway that does that to your mind. That's interesting. Well, That's really, yeah. I never really thought about it like that. But 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 anyway, so we was in the grocery store, getting back to matters at hand. We was in the grocery store. I had I I had come from work, I was filthy. You know, my my my, my work clothes was dirty. My my I, I don't even know if I had a hat on. I made it because I like to wear hats when I'm at work. I like and, and, and a lady walked up walked up to me and she knew I was saying. And I was the most filthiest, dirtiest, because you see it ain't about putting on the show. That's right. It's about letting the light shine. Amen. Amen. If you have God, God will be revealed. Yes. Amen. If you have God, Amen. people will hear you talk and they'll know that you're not the same. Yes. Uh, and so that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, God is real. The word of God is real. And the person that's really saved, they are real. Amen. Amen. And you don't have to prove anything to anyone. No. They'll just know. Yeah. Excuse me, they'll just know. Yes, sir. And I cannot tell you how many times I have nieces and nephews that are not necessarily serving God, right? They're not serving God. But we've been home many times back and forth, and they, they can see that we're different. Yes. And so I can't tell you how many phone calls I've gotten. Oh, I need your advice. Oh, I need you. What's for, what, I need you to do this. Oh, um, would you, you know, talking to me privately about yes. life? Yes. Because they know. They know. They know that we have God. Yes. They know that I'm going to tell them the truth. Amen. Even my nephew that dropped, that died tragically, uh, not too, uh, a few months ago, he used to call me all the time and ask me about things and talk to me about things, and I used to always tell him. You know what you need to do, and you need to, to, to change up the kind of life you're living and all this kind of stuff. And even my other, I, I got other uh, relatives that's involved in the streets and all that. One of them always that, you know, that, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. You need to get out of that and get your life together. Yeah. And you need to, you know you need to, you, you was raised to pray, you was raised to serve God. You know what's going on, and you know what you need to do. And so when you call me, I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm not going to let you off the hook. Now, I'm going to try to help you, but I'm also going to tell you the truth. Amen. 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 But the number one objective is to help me. Right. Okay? Right. Now, I don't mind, you know, church is a funny thing. Church has turned into like a, a production now. <laughs> it's like you go to church, it's like a production. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a kid, First of all, our church wasn't this. This is actually a nice church. Yes. It's nice. Yes, it might not be as nice as some others, but it's still nice. Yes, but the church I grew up in was a tent. It's our church. Well, you're right about it. It's our church. It's God's church. It's our church. We're God's people. That's right. And that's why we come. That's why we fellowship. That's why we take care of it. And that's why I appreciate you, brothers, everything you did. We keep the church up. Keep it up. Because it belongs to God. Right. And then because it belongs to God, the grass needs to be cut. Because it belongs to God, we need to make sure the building stays even more so than our own home. That's right. right. Amen. We need to make sure God's house yes, is sir. taken care of. Amen. That's why the book of Haggai, he told him, he said, yes. why do you sit in your sealed houses Preach. and let my house go away? He said, I'm going to let you put your money in a bag full of holes. Yeah. You let my house go away? You are, you are not going to enjoy whatever it is you want to enjoy because you don't care about the house of God. Oh God. Read it in the book of Haggai. He said, he said you are, it'll be like putting it. You ever wonder why you can't get ahead? You ever wonder why you can't accumulate? I'm going to tell you why. Because you're not taking care of God. Amen. It's a fact. And you, I know you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. But I promise you, if you're faithful to God, you take care of God, you, you do what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Man, as soon as my wife and I get something, we give God his off the top, off the rip. Yes, I said off the rip. Amen. 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 We, 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 we pay our tithe online. We take care of it. Get it out of the way. I don't yes. care. How, I don't care. We get a thousand dollars. God get a hundred. Yes. If we get two thousand, God get two hundred. Yes. I'm just saying we don't even play with it. Amen. And I'm not sharing that with you to make you feel bad. I'm not 
sharing that with you to cut you down. I'm just telling you that you need to be taking care of God's work Amen. and God's growth. Amen. Amen. And not only that, when the church is able to have what it needs, then we can do all the stuff that we need to do for the people. Amen. Amen. If we Amen. want to have something like during the summer, we want to do something with the kids, or, or we want to uh, have like a church in the park, or, or we want to have an event for the children, we can do it. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying, it's all about God. Amen. But anyway, Amen. so anyway, I, I, I've i been thinking about this while we were moving and all of that. And um, Crystal was it weird driving by and I see it in the car. And I, I do it weird because Crystal stays around the corner. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife, Crystal's probably going to be like, man, when well, this goes, it's probably weird. <laughs> and, um, and, I, I, and sometimes I'll be sitting in the car and I just see this blur. <laughs> I said, that's probably Christmas. <laughs> you know, I'm messing with you guys. Right and I'm just going, woo! And I'm like, oh, oh, that's just Christmas. <laughs> anyway, we, we, I'm saying that because I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, I want to share, I'm going to share various scriptures with you. But I'm going to use as my main thing Proverbs 18 and 21. And so if you'll stand, if you're able to stay with me. And you know what? I think we're going to do something a little different. If you're able to, I want you to help me this morning. And I want everybody to just, can you read that scripture up there? Yes, sir. Three, two, one. Proverbs 18 and what, 21? Yes. Read that for me. Yes. And the reason why I say that is because when you 
have God in you, you're not going to speak foolish. You're not going to speak stupidity. You're not going to go. You're not going to speak something that you don't need. You're not going to speak something that's wrong. That's one thing about having God inside of you. You're going to be honorable. You're going to be decent. You're going to do what needs to be done. You're not going to ask God for no foolishness. You're not going. You're not going to speak harm to somebody unnecessarily because you have to remember you're doing it with God inside of you. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I speak life in the dead right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know God has a time. And I know God has a plan. But in the name of Jesus we speak life. Hallelujah. I'm going to share something right here. I'm going to share something right here. I'm going to do something that I don't know. When you go out working today, I speak life. Yeah. I, I speak blessings yeah. upon your life. Yeah. The fact that you did what God told you to do. I believe God's going to move in your 
the devil has got to do everything he can to tear up marriages. He don't want people to be happy in family. Relationships. And you know how he does it? He don't just get in the middle of your marriage and mess it up. He do it by he does it by messing with the people individually. He, he gets you in discord with one another. And then he'll step back and let you destroy each other. Right. Amen. But when that man and that woman is, is, is walking in unity with yes. God, huh? the minute something happens, they repent. Yes. The minute something goes wrong, they go to God. Yes. The minute something don't feel right, I'm going to tell you right now with my wife and I am over 35 years, it hasn't always been the easiest in all every situation. But every time something come up, if I need to tell her I'm sorry, I, 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 first of all, I get right with God. I said, God, please forgive me for talking to my wife that way. Yeah. God, forgive me for what for what I did, for whatever the case may be. And I'm not talking about nothing bad or this and that. But I'm just saying things that can tear up a marriage, things that can mess up a marriage. And what what it comes from with her walking with God, and then every time she said, "Come to me and say, babe, I'm so sorry. That I, I, I shouldn't have did that, or that was wrong, or whatever the case may be." But you see, that's how you keep your marriage together by being right with God. How I said by being right with God, Amen. because when you're right with God, the minute something don't go the way it should, you go make it right. Yes. You keep because you want to be right with God. Amen. Amen. A lot of people don't understand this kind of stuff. All they're thinking about is the situation. All they're thinking about is what happened. Mm -hmm. But you're not thinking about how the devil played the long ball game with you. Yes, Amen. He got you messed up. Then he got them messed up. And then once he got the discord the way he wanted it, then all he had to do was step back and let you destroy each other. Mm -hmm. But he cannot deal with that if you're walking with God and they're walking with God. And every time something comes up, every time a situation don't go the way it needs to, you get somewhere. I can't tell you how many times I've had to get somewhere and get right and say, God, I got to, my, my thinking ain't right. God, the way I handled that was wrong. And I'm asking you to forgive me. And then I'll go to my wife and say, babe, I'm so sorry. And I'm told by all at the same time, I still open the door for I still treat her like I'm supposed to. You know why? Because when you're saved, when you're saved, I still may treat her like she's the most important woman in the world. Even in the middle of all that, it all stems from God being in you. You can't pretend it. You can't fake it. You can't act like it. God, God is either in you or he's not. And then when he's in you, there's power. I said when he's in you, that's power. And then you can start speaking things. And say in the name of Jesus, get away from my children. In the name of Jesus, get away from my finances. In the name of Jesus, get away from my mentality. In the name of Jesus, get away from my feelings and my emotions. Because all of it belongs to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything stems your relationship with God. If it's not right, everything else will be out of yes, Everything. Yes, no matter what you do, no matter how many scriptures you quote, mm -hmm. no matter how many times you come to church, no matter how many songs you sing, no matter how much money you give, if your relationship with God is not the way it needs to be, it's not going to work. you got to get that right. That's why so many people come in here and they can stay for a while and when God starts applying that pressure, uh, when God starts applying, you, you, ever, you ever seen, uh, what do you call that, Brother James? Uh, that, that, that vice grip. Ooh, we, you ever worked with a vice grip before? I can put my cover in and go. A vice grip has a handle and it, and it goes in. As you turn it, it goes in, it goes in. And every service you come to, God turns that vice grip. Amen. Uh, and you like, but, see, but see, you get mad at me. You get mad at the scripture. You know, you get mad at the conviction that you feel. But what it really is, is you in the vice grip. Uh, or if it's not a vice grip, it's God fishing and he's got a hook in your jaw. 
Amen. And you're like that fish out there. You want to stay in that water. You want to stay in the club. You want to stay in all that lifestyle you got going on. And God is trying to reel you in. And you're fighting God all over the place. And God, and you know what God says? It's like a good old pro. After a while, they'll get tired. Uh, they'll get tired. Uh, old fishermen. Uh, and then, and then, but America, God put that drag on right now. He'll let you go on the way out. And then he'll reel you in some more. And then let that drag out. There are some things that you have going on in your life that God can't, can't fix you if you give him hope. Amen. Um, Amen. You ever heard, you ever talk to people that like to fish? They always talk about the one that got away. I want you to 
to speak it today. Amen. I want you to speak faithfulness. Yes. I want you to speak faithfulness in your situation. I don't care what it takes, I'm speaking faithfulness. I don't care if I come to church once a month, I'm speaking faithfulness to myself. Dude, I guarantee you. Amen. Uh, Amen. You, you start speaking to it. And you start telling yourself, I'm going to overcome being tired. I'm going to overcome my schedule. I'm going to overcome whatever I have going on. And I'm going to speak it because Jesus put me first. Amen. You know, on the cross, uh, on the cross, his flesh didn't want to go to the cross. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he spoke to his flesh. Did you hear me? He spoke to his flesh. He spoke to the Father. He said, Father, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He spoke to the situation. You got to speak to him. You want, your, you want the best for your children? Speak to the situation. You want the best for your, your life, yeah. your family, your, 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 spiritual, your spiritual situation? You got to speak to it. Amen. I said you got to speak to it. There's power in life. There's life in the tongue. Yeah. There's death in life in the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Oh, do you not know you can enjoy the fruit of your labors? Huh? Amen. Amen. My wife and I, we just had to move. Some of it came as a result of something that somebody did. But God moved in that situation. Yes, he did. I said God moved in that situation. Yes, because when you speak to it, and no wonder God's been dealing with me about that all week. I spoke to that situation. I said, God, you deal with it. You take care of it. You work it out. I'm not going to get in the mud with people. I'm not going to get ugly with people. I'm going to take the high road, but I'm going to speak to that situation. And I'm going to tell you right now, we got the better end of the situation. I promise you, not because of something I did, not because of something my wife did, but because of something God did. Yes, amen. And I want to share something with you. When the brothers and sisters that was there with us yesterday, when we got the wig, probably in the last stuff. What really touched my heart, what really touched my heart, our brother said, let's, okay, let's, let's bless Pastor's house. And you know, a lot of times, this wife and I wanted to do things for you and wanted to help you, but you have no idea how much it means when you say, Let's do something for Pastor Sister Wilson. I'm not asking, you know what I'm saying? But, but when you step forward and you said, let's, let's bless, let's bless the house, let's bless. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about houses and land. I'm just talking about caring about peace. And let's, let's pray that God bless their home. You know, we need God to bless our home too. It's, it means a lot when people in the church step up, yes. just like when you did the concrete, yes. just like the grass or the paint job or, or whatever it is, it may be the children's church, when the ladies do things here inside the church or whatever it may be, whether it be helping somebody, you know, we're supposed to help one another. Amen. 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 We're supposed to help one another. Sometimes there might be money involved. You guys want to hear something real funny? And I'm going to close. But we got to speak to it today. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to step up. Yes, sir. And challenge the devil. Yes, sir. Yes, you got to stop right. letting your That's life right. get pushed around. Amen. You're a child of God. Amen. You're a child of God. You got to stop getting pushed around. Yes, sir. The Bible yes, sir. says, submit yourself to God. Yes. Resist the devil. And he'll what? Flee from you. The Bible says he will flee from you. Amen. Not walk from you, not crawl right. from you. Right. Believe you can send him on the run. That's right. By submitting yourself Amen. to what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. Now what was I getting ready to say? Funny. You said you want to oh, say something funny. I don't know. I know exactly what it is. I know exactly what it is. It came to me again and then it slipped me. I wanted to share one other, one last little thing, but maybe it wasn't that important. I want to 
want to share something. Uh, he said, is this what I mean? <laughs> I want to know. And, uh, Amen. We just need to pray. We need to pray. We need to speak to the situation. 